Good evening, everyone. It's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. This is the um, episode you guys have all been waiting for. Matt Beyer is here to talk with us about all things Amber Portwood. He was her, what, boyfriend for almost four years. Um, on Teen Mom OG for several seasons, appeared with her on Marriage Boot Camp, where he notoriously said, it will take someone, it will take you to kill someone for people to realize who you really are. Is that, is that the quote, Matt? That was the quote, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I said. Welcome, Matt. Hi. How are you tonight? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm thankful for you coming on. I'm sure my get, or my uh, audience is all kinds of excited. I've been getting tweets and inboxes and DMs all day about when you're going to be on. So, um, Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You have been um, kind of stuck in the story because your ex-girlfriend is in the news for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And you reached out to me following leaked audio uh, right. of her going off. And what was it about that audio that made you feel compelled to? Well, uh, you know, somebody had sent it to me. And uh, so I didn't know anything about the situation, you know, the audio prior to it hit my inbox. And uh, I, I listened to it and uh, I kind of found myself without even realizing I was doing it. I looked down at my hands were shaking. Mm -hmm. And it, it it became kind of a trigger thing for me. I mean, it wasn't fear. It wasn't anything like that. But I hadn't heard that voice and those names, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. in a couple of years. And I think uh, I had kind of forgot about some of it. And it just yeah. brought back a lot of stuff for me. So I, um, you know, and then I, I noticed that people were instantly calling Andrew a liar. He said, yeah. Robbie, this, he did that. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know him. I've spoken to him once in my life. Sure. And that, that was for two minutes. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just kind of got a little bit defensive of him at that particular moment when I contact you and say, Hey, listen, uh, in this particular situation, I think this, this guy needs the benefit of the doubt because, uh, you know, I had somewhat similar experiences. And so, and that's kind of how it started. Um, I just felt kind of bad for him that there was a segment of the population that was saying, hey, this guy, th this guy's making this up, or he did this to her, or he did that to her. And I wasn't obviously there that night. I don't have any special information with regard to that night specifically. But those words that I heard on that first audio were exactly the words that I heard. Uh, and I, I jokingly tell people uh, now that you could – you could go back and kind of hear that exact same conversation, just replace the word fat with old. Oh. And, that was, and that was the exact same insult, same everything. So that's kind of how the, this whole thing started. So that kind of verbal altercation is not, wasn't abnormal to your relationship is what you're saying? No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't abnormal. Um, I mean, to be to be perfectly clear, um, the best way I can describe Amber is she is incredibly super loving or very, very mean. There's no in between. Sure. There, there's never just a, a normal, mild day. You are either the center of her world and the greatest thing that ever happened, or you're the biggest piece of crap that ever lived. And there's a lot of times, and I, and I don't know if Andrew experienced this, but with me, I never, especially towards the end, I never knew where I really stood. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and sometimes you can be the most loving person and the biggest piece of crap in the same sentence. Oh, I'm so sure, yeah. It made, it made your head spin a little bit. Walking on eggshells, maybe? Oh, oh yeah, it, especially towards the end. It, it, was, uh, it, it was difficult. Now, if I was going to sit here and say that you know, every confrontation that Amber and I had was her fault. I'd be a liar. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. that, that just wouldn't be true. But sure. I mean, if you're asking that specific question, um, Amber can go to dark places verbally 
like nobody I've ever met before. And some of the some of the stuff is so is so vicious that you have to do a double take and say, I really can't believe you just went there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, and what always struck me as is interesting was when it was over. And I don't know how long the confrontations lasted with, with Andrew, but with Amber and I, they were never very, very long. Yeah. And within 30 minutes, it would be as like, it never happened. Sure. Uh, you know, people people would ask me all the time, if, if when that happened, did she apologize? No. And she didn't apologize because I think, and, and I'm no psychiatrist, but I think for Amber, she either didn't realize the things that came out of her mouth. Yeah. Or she just doesn't want to relive it in this, in this way, hence feel bad about it. So yeah. it, was, it was usually a, it's time to move on. So and that's usually what happened. When fights happened, you just, like, after they were over, you couldn't, like, re, like, uh, decompress it or... Um... I made the mistake of trying to readdress the, the argument. I made this mistake a lot of times where I would go and say, you know, I, I know it's over, but can we really talk about this? Yeah. I, I learned after a while that's probably the best thing to do is to just let it go. No matter who was who was responsible for the argument, whether it's me or whether it was her. Right. Um, it, it, it's she's not the easiest person to go back and readdress things with because that could lead to another another fight. fight. Sure. Right. So I always found it was easier to just not do it. Would she apologize when you never? Never. never. She, she never said the words, I'm sorry. I, I honestly believe that in a lot of cases she was. Yeah. But, and, and this is just, just from my experience. I think a lot of Amber was, if she apologized for it, that's admitting that she was wrong. Sure. And, that's, and, and I say this kind of with a smile on my face because it could be, it, it could have been, fun. It's, it was fun sometimes when Amber would never admit that she was wrong. That's the one thing I've never heard her do in the, all the years that I was with her is say, you know what, I am flat out wrong. And after a while, it almost became a competition, you know, whether uh, one thing about me is, I, and, and God knows I'm not a perfect person, but I, if I'm wrong, I'll tell you I'm wrong. Yeah. It might take a while. It might take a while, but I, I'll tell you that I'm wrong. Amber doesn't do that. Um, she, I, I don't know why. She doesn't do that, but it's just not who she is. She'll never say the words, you know what, I shouldn't have done this. Do you think it's, um, like, pride, or is it just that she just doesn't think she's done anything wrong? No, I I think she she knows when she does something wrong. I think pride has something to do with it. Um, I think that with Amber, and I learned this really early on, and and I've said this in in other outlets before, a lot of the times, the arguments would start over something very small. Yeah. Uh, and, and it could be entertainment related. It could be weather related. It didn't matter. Um, if Amber said something that was factually incorrect, yeah. I'm just giving a hypothetical. And if you were to say to her, that's factually incorrect, yeah. Amber didn't hear, okay, I've made a mistake. What Amber heard was, you're stupid. Like you, that's ca- what that's what she heard. Like you called me stupid. Yes, and and that's a, with my experience. That's where a lot of this stuff would start, you know. And one thing I, I would never say is that Amber Portwood is stupid. She's not stupid by any means. Um, but I, I don't know where that came from. I'm not going to sit here and say it came from her childhood. I'm not. I'm not uh, experienced enough to say. Yeah, that. you're not going to like speculate. No, that would be that would be pure speculation. But that's one thing that she never wanted to think that anybody thought that she was stupid. And again, I never once thought she was. She's actually really intelligent, yeah. and her she has a vast knowledge of a lot of different subjects. Sure. But everybody makes mistakes, you know. Yeah. And oh God. She uh, she does not like to be told that something's wrong. I make mistakes every day, and people don't let me forget about it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so when you guys were, so there was a lot, obviously with your relationship of, I guess there was what we saw on Teen Mom OG and then like who you guys were in like behind closed doors. Like Mm -hmm. how was your relationship different 
on camera versus off camera? For the first couple of years, there was no difference. Okay. Uh, what, what you saw on camera was what our life was like. I mean, um, I, I think, and not to put thoughts in anybody's head, but I think because of what's going on now, that people think that my life with Amber was 24 hour hell. And it wasn't. It, it yeah. really wasn't. Um, there was, for the first couple of years, I can't really think of too many times when Amber and I would disagree on anything. We actually, you know, we lived a pretty good life. Um, once that changed, uh, it was, yeah, there, there were some dark moments. But our life was, was pretty much what you saw on TV. However, I can say this. People aren't ever going to get the whole story from watching the show. And if you, if you think about it, you know, mathematically, there's four stories, uh, 45 minutes when you take out the commercials, and you break that down, it's... Like 11 minutes. It's about 11 minutes. Away. And with Amber's story, they're also featuring Gary. Right. And so, so she's really right. getting like five minutes of screen time. Right. And so people would, you know, naturally think that they knew everything about our life from that 11 minutes because they, they would say oh i just watched you for an hour on tv well no you didn't you watched this for 11 minutes right so, right you know and and, and even in this pat like this past season um her uh, her clips were so short i mean the most of what they did to be honest was um gary and christina you know and it's like they do half and half so she's really towards yeah. the, these last cute few seasons it's been like five minutes of her you know and within that five minutes you're seeing not a whole lot right and, and i think what people tend to naturally do is to try to fill in the blanks yeah um you know and, and say well i'm going to speculate as to what the rest of the story is and nine times out of ten they're wrong sure so. assumptions man <laughs> yeah assumptions oh, yeah. How do you feel like the editing was towards, like, did producers, like, instigate? Um, no, no. No. No, no. They, they didn't instigate uh, anything. What, what they, they did was they would ask specific questions that uh, bring up specific subjects that they wanted you to talk about. Okay. And I, I do remember uh, a lot of instances where Amber in particular would say, right from the onset, I don't want to talk about X, Y, Z. And they say, no, no, no problem. They go in another direction and somehow it would work its way back to X, Y, Z. And Do you, did they year, pick topics that might get her... Riled like, up? Riled up? No, that was never their goal. Okay. Uh, no, they picked topics, in my opinion, that I think they would, they would feel was interesting TV. Um, whether it was or not, is not for me to say, but I mean, uh, people going to the grocery store or going to the park is just interesting for so long. Right. I think they, they, they want to talk about real world issues. Drama. Even if, even if they're manufactured in some, in some sense. Like you're going to talk about a fight you had last year or something like that. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. But I, I can tell you from working with the people at MTV that, um, they're they really do care about the cast they, they they really do and the producers that are out in the field they they don't have any ill intentions at all but they have a job to do and the job is to make interesting tv sure and uh you know and sometimes it, it takes you in a dramatic direction and uh you know there's been many times where afterwards you know there's been a sorry we had to bring that up but this is where the storyline's going. Yeah. And you asked me about the editing. I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but the editing, my first season on there, I I used to think, wow, that's exact, not exactly how certain situation happened. Yeah. And I, I would see the edited, edited work and say, I don't know how they got that from that. After a year or two on the show, it, you don't even notice it anymore, honestly. It's just part of life. So... Sometimes it almost seems expect. like they splice parts together to make it look like... I'll give, you, I'll give you a wonderful example of that. Um, my first season on the show, Yeah. Uh, the episode where uh, Amber tells her cousin Crystal that we got engaged. And okay. 
they on the on the the episode they immediately cut to Crystal who has this look of horror on her face, and then of course they go to commercial. In reality, Crystal was very excited. Sure. She had us both hugs, and one of our puppies pooped on the floor. She turned around <laughs> and made a face, and that was the face that they spliced. Of course, in. of course. So, I feel like you know, they always do those types of faces before a commercial break or something to like yeah, oh, absolutely. add drama. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So what was the hardest part? Like, do you, were there aspects of it that you felt like you couldn't control? Like the media during your time was very obsessed with the fact that you were always lying <laughs> or a con man or... Yeah. Digging, That's one of my personal favorites. Yeah, or digging into your personal background and saying you owe child support or mm -hmm. you're a deadbeat dad or yeah. you lie about everything. Like, what What are those, what was the facts versus, like, what was told in the media? Because the media, we do get it wrong sometimes. Well, you know, listen, I could go story by story and tell you what's accurate and what's not. There was some accurate stuff. Of course there was. And then there was stuff that was completely overblown and um you know in, in reality i never stepped up and said okay guys here's the facts let's put this thing to sleep and the reason i never did that is this wasn't about me this was amber show and once i did that this my show it's me. my show <laughs> but i i understand what you're saying yeah. but and from that regard, it was her show. Right. You know, just like it's Macy's and Caitlin's and right. back then Ferris. You know, it wasn't it wasn't my show. And the second I started changing the narrative and saying, this is the truth about this, this is not the truth about this, then the story became about me. And that's not something I ever wanted. That wasn't fair to Amber. That wasn't fair to anybody. And so Amber told me a long time ago, you can step up right now and squash all of this stuff. But keep in mind, you're going to become the story now. Or you can just let it go. And I chose to just let it go. So she had more, much more experience in this regard than I did. So I, I tended to follow her lead when she gave media advice. So. Yeah. And then once the story is out there and they've decided that this is what it is, it's hard for anyone to... Yeah. Yeah. It, I got to be honest with you. There was... The first year was tough. Yeah. There was, there was a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of, you know what, I'm going to call this person and tell them what the real story is. Yeah. After that, I, I just didn't care. You know, it, it, at that point, it became, some of the stuff became so ridiculous that I, 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 I became unrecognizable. So. What was the most ridiculous story that you heard about yourself that wasn't the first, true? The, the, first, the first thing I ever read about myself was, ridiculous thing in my eyes there was a big headline and i'm not going to mention the outlet but you know who you are the uh, uh the headline read um amber portwood's fiance matt byers um what incredible uh, what is it awful criminal record and i thought do i have a criminal record so i i, I read the article and somewhere tucked at the bottom it said that I bounced a thirty-two dollar check at a bar in nineteen ninety-two, and I thought, "Wow!" But that record. plants the seed that you're the criminal, right? <laughs> yeah. So after that, I, uh, you know, apparently I became public enemy number one, and I, um, you know, in nineteen ninety-two, God, I'm dating myself, but in nineteen ninety-two, I was in college, and yeah, there was a pretty good chance I might have bounced a check in a bar in nineteen ninety-two. Yeah. You know, um, but it was it was stuff like that and, I, and stuff that I wasn't really used to. I mean, and, and then other stuff that, you know, I can't really give you a specific example, but it, it all became just so mundane after a while. And then there was stuff that, you know, was actually true that I would say, oh, yeah, I, I did that. <laughs> you know, or I vaguely remember that. And so you know on. what I've noticed? And I'm in a very, I'm on a much smaller level than you. But obviously this story has put in put me out there and I've gotten a tiny taste of um, probably what they feel times 3,000 million, but every single word you use is found, they find a way to twist things or misconstrue it or misunderstand it. And then you feel like you're trying to fight against every mistruth. And then like you said, it gets to a point where it's like, 
do I just fight it or do I just let it go? You let it go. You right. To, as tough as it is, yeah. you, have, you have to let it go. The, the only times it really bothered me yeah. was when I was out in public and then somebody would come up and ask me about something specific. Yeah. And I, I felt the need to either confirm or deny something that's kind of personal. Yeah. I felt like that was my obligation to do and and there have been people that have come up in, in some really inappropriate times and and said, Oh, you know, Matt, I'm really happy to meet you. Can you take a picture? By the way, is it true that and I'm thinking, you know, I, I can't be an ass and just say I'm not gonna discuss this and walk away. Right. So I've always been the person that would find find myself overly explaining. And sometimes it took up a lot of time, but So Let's talk about your the end of your relationship. And then I have some questions about just some background understanding about her family. But, like, a lot of people since her arrest have been going back to the marriage boot camp, which was where you guys ultimately split up, right? That was right. where – going into that, where was your relationship? It was not good at that point. It had been it had been rough for I would say a couple of months. I, I, I may be off on the number there, but um, we went into and in fact I to give, to give you a perfect example when we went to marriage boot camp they put you they put us up at a hotel obviously the night before mm-hmm. and Amber and I didn't even share a room that the night before. I mean we um, we weren't on the best of terms at that point. Uh, so but. I can tell you that once we went into the house, it, it's kind of like we we initially automatically bonded because we realized that hey, it's kind of us against everybody else. Sure. Kind of like, so, um, you know, it was uh, yeah, our relationship wasn't wasn't great at that point, which is probably why we went on there. Right. And you're there with Tanya. Yeah. What's she like? Tanya. Um, I have a lot of love for Tanya. Tanya was basically my mother-in-law for three and a half years, and I have a lot of I have a lot of love for Tanya. I do. Uh, I have a lot of love for all of Amber's family, and, and and the reason is that they didn't have to accept me into their life as easily as they did when Amber and I first got together, and they treated me like I was one of the family from day one, and that includes Tanya. Um, so I, I don't have anything really negative to say about her i mean we we weren't the best of friends especially on marriage boot camp but i um my memories of amber's entire family are nothing but positive and that's only based on the way they treated me so on so, marriage boot camp she literally seemed like she was like high the whole time it, it would have it would appear that way yeah was she uh, is she like was she addicted to pain pills I never, uh, I, I have no information on that. Oh. I mean, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Um, I never saw Tanya take pills. So I, I, I saw behavior. I saw, I, I've heard talk. I've heard, you know, seen certain things. But for me to sit here and say that she has a pain pill addiction, that wouldn't be fair because I didn't witness it. That would be speculation. She seemed like she was, like, withdrawing or something, and then they, I don't even remember, like, they had to go. Well, I think, I do want to say this about Tanya, and not to seem like I'm overly defending her, but a lot of people think that she's occasionally on things because of her speech pattern. Mm -hmm. Tanya has a hearing problem. Oh, does she? Yeah, it affects her speech, and so sometimes people will think, oh, that woman is high or drunk, and I can tell you there's been many times where neither was the case. It's just her speech pattern. Okay. That being that being said, the, you know the other side of that. All I can tell you that it would be. It would probably get worse than if she were on like in a pain. It, it would be pure speculation. Okay. And I, I don't do that. Got it. So when you guys were there, um, obviously I re- I I have watched the season multiple times because obviously. It's literally one of my favorite shows ever, and it's coming back, and Aaron Carter's going to be on it. It's going to be ridiculous with Corey Feldman. But um, one of the things that I noticed more than anything when I was watching the show is how little it took to set her off. Um, That surprised me. That really surprised me, Katie. And 
Amber, people ask me what I, why I finally made the decision to end our relationship. Yeah. And, and the reason was Amber was acting a way in front of cameras that I had never seen her act before. Yeah, it was, I mean, even for me, it was like, because she's, after her arrest and she was back in like the reformed period, mm -hmm. um, she was very much, she was a lot more controlled except for when she got mad at like, um, well, the lie detector with you, she got mad about uh -huh. that. Um, oh, are you frozen? I don't know. You're, you're frozen, but that's okay. I'm moving. Your camera's frozen, but that's okay. So, um, we can hear you. <laughs> right. Um, so the, where was I going with this? Well, okay. So I, I'm thinking of like the first day of marriage boot camp. So yeah. they're talking about like reality TV and I think it was Jim Jones. He said something like, well, a lot of that is really scripted or it's. Yeah. It was Jim and, Jim and Chrissy. Yeah. Talking about it. Yeah. I can tell you that that was the most surprising blow up I've ever seen her. It, it's like it, it literally seemed to come out of nowhere. Well, you know what it was? I think that's, again, Amber thinking that everybody is attacking her. If she would have taken a second to realize that everybody in that cast was part of reality TV. Right. So I, in, in her mind, she thought they were singling her out. And then she came back with, well, I've been doing this for 10 years and this is my life and they're attacking my life. It, it was one of the more surprising times I've ever seen her blow up. So. I see. Am I unfrozen? No, it says it's, we have a poor connection, but, um, uh, I don't know. You're, you're, you're not even there right now, but I can hear you. Okay. Um, <laughs> they can just look at your head right now. It just says poor connection. <laughs> um, so yeah, it seemed like she was really defensive with the fact that like there was this implication that maybe what she was doing on camera was fake. And now when I look back on it and I see sort of like this dichotomy of who she is publicly versus um, who she is behind the scenes, mm -hmm. I, m my mind and obviously weren't, it's just thinking like, is there maybe that insecurity that she thinks or that she felt exposed? I, I think she felt attacked. Attacked, and, okay. And in, in reality, she wasn't being attacked at all. Um, but she, Amber's very, very defensive of the fact that this is what she's done for a living for 10 years. Uh, she doesn't like it because, let, let's be honest, I know, I know it's not the hardest work in the world, but it's also not the easiest life to have, to have you, yourself so exposed to the public. Yeah. And so she, she's always felt that that commands a certain level of respect, whether, whether it does or not, it's not for me to say. Yeah. But when she felt that she was being attacked and that came out of nowhere because we were laughing and joking. I, I mean, 30 seconds before she left out of that chair. And that was one of the times where I thought, I've never seen her do this on camera before. Yeah. And, and this is becoming, this is, she's getting to a point where it's somebody I don't recognize. So like her behavior is escalating. I don't feel safe. Her, her lack of control is escalating. Okay. Is the best way I'd put it. And then on top of that, we left there that night and they showed us our bedroom. And I don't know how much of this was caught on or aired on the show, but they uh, had spread fake pain pills all over the yeah bed. that was on there and she flipped out and she lost her mind over that and you know i i, I think again that she took that as a sign of disrespect as if as if they were calling her a junkie and which they weren't they were just you know i mean they did stuff on that show to try to get under our skin but right you know she they got her to an elevated sense of anger and they just kept her there and Hope, you know, and they do this for a reason, from what I understand, that then they can get you to this point and then they can start working you back down therapeutically or, or whatnot. Uh, it was tough to get her get her down after that. Point. I can only imagine. Yeah. So when you finally made the decision to be, I guess, I'm just going to put a picture of you up here. <laughs> All right. When, when you made the choice to, like, end your... Um, relationship did you guys speak after that yeah 
we uh, um, we spoke. I'm, I'm trying to be as specific as possible. I left Marriott Boot Camp two days early. Yeah. Uh, they, I, 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 they wanted me to stay, and I said, and well, my exact words were, our relationship is over. There's nothing else to work on. Let her now work on her relationship with her mom. I have no reason to be here. And after some some agreement, they they sent they allowed me to go home. Um, so I didn't talk to her for a couple of days. Once, and you left actually without saying goodbye. That's how it looked in editing. Yeah, I did. I did. I uh, and then she came out into the the driveway and said her goodbyes in her charming way. Um, but I I went back to Indianapolis and and packed up as much stuff as possible. I got a call from Amber the night that the, they wrapped. And uh, it was a very, it was a strange conversation because and now I understand why she asked me the question she asked me. She said, um, you're not still in LA, are you? And I said, no, I'm in Indianapolis. She said, are you sure? Because I'm meeting up with some people tonight and I don't want you there. Well, <laughs> you know, I my understanding, and I could be wrong, um, my, I was told that that might have been the night where oh her, she, she and Matt Andrew, for, she met Andrew yeah. oh, Andrew I'm sorry yeah 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 so uh, she was she was very adamant about you're you're really not in L A right you're not coming to the rap party or whatever it is I said no I'm at the house in Indianapolis and then I didn't hear from her until she got home and then really realized that I was gone and then she called so you really left like <laughs> I left it was uh which was not the easiest decision at the time. But then um, we spoke a couple of times. Tensions had kind of calmed down. We, uh, um, we kind of reminded each other what, that we were friends before we ever got together. Yeah. And we started talk, talking as friends. Um, and then I, I heard from her a couple of times, just friendly conversation. And then I hadn't heard from her in about a week. And then I heard from the press about the fact that she was pregnant and then I, I called her up and I, I and she answered the phone I'll never forget it and I said uh, hey is there something that you want to tell me and she said what are you talking about I said I just got a call from Radar Online and they wanted me to comment on the fact that you're pregnant and she's like uh, oh yeah that <laughs> you know how long so, how far like how many how many months removed from the like from your relationship was she... I'm gonna say this was two months later. I, I we left marriage boot camp in the end of July, I think. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this was, and I, and I could be wrong on this, but I could. I, I'm gonna say that this wasn't. It was no for sure not more than three months later. I, I well, yeah, that because uh, James was born in May of 2018. Yeah, so I would say probably you know September, early September, I'm guessing. Wow. And uh, and it wasn't in any way uh, uh, an adversarial conversation. I was, I, you know, congratulated her and, and you know, and then uh, then she had James and I, I immediately sent her a text message, you know, wishing them the best. And, you know, there was no, there was no hard feelings at that point. So now, how, I mean, how would that feel finding out she was pregnant so quickly after? I mean, were you okay with that? Were you... I was fine with it. I what the only thing that bothers me it bothered me at the time was that I had found out from a report from the press. But I look at it now, and she had no reason to tell me she was my ex. I was sure. her ex, you know. I mean, I, she did. She she didn't have any obligation to pick up the phone and tell me anything. So uh, I I think my my feelings of um, you know discomfort over that weren't weren't fair to her. You know, she had no reason. I'm sure I was the last thing on her mind when she found out she was pregnant. She's got, she had Andrew to deal with. You know, she has Leah. She has her family. I'm sure. Let me call my ex. Didn't didn't you know pop up at some point? So that was selfish of me to even think that. So with your um, obviously it sounds like her behavior was escalating towards the end of your relationship, and obviously I would say both of our behavior escalating towards the end of our relationship obviously hers didn't stop escalating um or maybe it did for a period of time but then didn't um and you said when we spoke last time that when you were together she was pretty sober in terms of like 100 percent, 100 percent sober um i've never seen amber do an illegal drug or a pain pill or anything like that um 
Does it so, surprise you that... It shocks me, Katie. It shocks me. Which is why, I, in regards to the drug use, I immediately came to her defense and said, there's no way this, this is true. You and I had this conversation. Yeah. I, I'm yep. just saying, dude, there's no way this is true. Yeah. Um, it, if I don't know if it's true now, I have... You know, I just take people's word for it. If what they're telling me is true about her drug use, yeah, I am completely blown away by that because I I cannot stress if if people believe nothing that I say, believe this. Amber Portwood was completely sober at the time when we were together. The she she didn't go near a drug. And she didn't. We went to the she she her I think it was her foot or her hand or something. We ended up going to the ER uh, to she needed X rays and, and whatever she had hurt. I think it was her wrist was really swollen and the first thing she said to the nurse was i'm an addict my medical records are flagged you can't give me any narcotics this is before they even examined her so that this is the state of mind that she was in so if she does have a drug issue right now i am absolutely shocked by that and sad for her you you did mention towards the end of your relationship she started smoking pot right yeah yeah I okay. think that's kind of public knowledge, yeah. Um, it wasn't... I'm, I'm not a pot guy, so I don't know what's a lot and what's not, but she, I, she certainly wasn't walking around the house with a blunt in her mouth. <laughs> I mean, yeah. she, you know, um, and it wasn't an all-the-time thing, and it was definitely towards the, the very tail end of our relationship. Because after marriage boot camp, there was a lot of talk in the media about her maybe not appearing as sober as she had been on marriage boot camp and then she came out publicly and said that she had relapsed um i don't know i don't know i don't know anything about her relapse i just I, like i said she was I, she drank though right occasionally she would drink when we would go on trips she would drink with you know with the girls on on reunion shows and so on and so forth but she I can't think of one time even Amber laying in bed watching TV and drinking a glass of wine. I just it, it, it just wasn't a part of our life at, at okay. that point. So and you re- this, you had relapsed while you were oh yeah hard yeah, I did and she didn't know anything about it. So she had to find out like everybody else found out through my a awful behavior and b the press. So that was uh. Yeah, I think the craziest that. story I read about you, I know you said it, but I think the craziest story I read about you was like published by Raider Online that your son said that you weren't an addict and that you yeah. made up your addictions. Well, Christopher also then went on TV on the Dr. Drew show and admitted that he made that up. Uh, Chris, <laughs> listen, I love my son and I'm not going to, uh, you know, certainly not going to say anything. Christopher's in a different place in his life now. He he has a, a baby of his own, and he's doing really really well. And um, yeah, he he apologized pretty hard for that. And listen, he had he had a lot of reasons to to not be happy with me at that point. Sure. We didn't have uh, we were estranged for the better part of his childhood, so. I, I don't blame him at that point, yeah. but I'm really glad as to where we ended up. That's and, good. Uh, and uh, I, I just told him straight out now that he's, you know, he's a dad himself, you know, your only goal is to be a better dad than I was. And, and he seems to be, he seems to be doing it really well. I'm really proud of him. That's so, great. Yeah. So um, what is like relations to, so I spend a lot of time now filtering out untruths posted by Sean Portwood or what I believe is Amber maybe using Sean as a way to speak because she's not speaking publicly. This is my speculation, obviously. But why do you think he defends her so much even if she's lying? He's her big brother. He loves his sister. Uh, They are extraordinarily close. Now, uh, I can say this comfortably because Sean and I are best of friends, um, but I do have a lot of respect for Sean uh, in and, and a lot of different ways. So I'll clear up a couple of things about Sean. Number one, I see a lot of people talking about how Amber gives her brother money. That's not true. Amber has, I, I have per- personally witnessed Amber offer Sean money. Sean does not take it. He supports himself and his family all on his own. So I want to clear that up. Um, I think Sean is... Sean and Amber were very close growing up, and I don't want to, I don't want to 
speak out of turn, but from my understanding, they didn't have the greatest upbringing, which brought them very close together. Sean has always been extremely protective of Amber. Um, so I, I, I can't blame the guy for publicly defending his sister. And I, I have no information as whether or not Amber's lying to him. I don't know anything about that, but I will say this, that he, if Amber does tell him something, he's going to believe her. And that's just his, his big brother instinct. You know, it's, um, I, I think Like that, he believes her and defends her almost to a fault. I would, I, I would guess, I mean, maybe if, there's some things that Sean, Sean's by no means stupid, but I think his protective instincts sometimes outweigh common sense and, and, and that's okay. You know what? I think everybody would like to have a big sibling like that, you know, that's going to that's kind of a ride or die type thing. So the people that are, are going on social media and blasting Sean Portwood for defending his sister, I don't think that's really fair. I mean, if he, if he comes out and, and says, listen, this, he said it in a, in a tweet he put out, he said, I'm going to always support my sister. And he should, he doesn't have to like what she did to love his sister. If, if that makes sense. I think the, the biggest thing that, though is is that he's really sort of right now planting a lot of the seeds that she's been saying about Andrew, um, talking about, you know, what a terrible person Andrew is, um, making, um, a, making a lot of allegations about stealing money, and that's something that she accused you of. Yeah. <laughs> Did, so... You want to know what that was about? Tell me. Um, Amber and I used to flip houses together. As you know, yeah. Um, the last house that we did together, Amber specifically said she didn't want to have anything to do with. Uh, she was working at this point that she was getting ready to launch her boutique, I believe. And um, she said, "You're going to do the houses. I'm going to do the boutique, and they're and they're separate." And um, straight out fact is, I purchased the house, that particular house, with my money. Uh, it full, you know, fully expecting everything to go back into the hopper, so to speak. We were done. Um, house got fixed up. We sold it for a profit, which is why we were doing this stuff. Um, Amber and I's relationship ended. She took their boutique stuff, and I took the house flipping stuff, and that was the end of it. And I think, and I've spoken about this before, Amber had to be with Amber does, does provide opportunities that a lot of people normally wouldn't have. Obviously, right. the, the show provides that. Right. Amber takes that to the extreme by saying, everything that you make is mine because you wouldn't have it if it wasn't for me. Now, is there some truth to that? Yeah, I wouldn't have been on Teen Mom without Amber Portwood, obviously. Um, that doesn't mean that we didn't work too. That doesn't mean that Andrew didn't work. That doesn't mean that- It doesn't that, mean that your paycheck with MTV wasn't your paycheck, right? Yes, and that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And Did and she, I'm, would she like, would she call your paycheck her money? Not not during happy times, no. And now I, I will say this about Amber. I, I was very, very well compensated on Teen Mom. And the reason I was is because of Amber Portwood. She flat out said, we will not film unless you give him this. So I give her all the credit in the world for that. She, um, and I'm sure she did the same for Andrew. Um, but during happy times, no, that's, that's your money. And then we have our money and then she has her money. It's during unhappy times where she would step up and say, you know what? Everything's mine. Screw you. I'm going to leave you where I found you. You're, you know, you're a piece of crap. You're a loser. You're nothing without me. And I, I think that has a lot to do that, that you're nothing without me is kind of the key to all that. You know what I mean? Like she I has, made you and I'm going to break you. Yes, exactly. Do I think that she means this stuff? I really don't. I really, I really think that Amber says a lot of things being somebody who has some impulse control issues that she doesn't necessarily mean when she thinks it through, but the damage is done. It's already been said. And, and then once you say something publicly, like Andrew stole my money, whether it's true or not, it's kind of a tough bell to unring. Well, and then people just see patterns, right? So sure. they, she accuses Gary of cheating, stealing money, blah, blah, blah. He, she, she accuses you of punching her, stealing money, cheating, Blah, blah, blah. Now it's the yeah. same thing with Andrew. You know, um, Sean was on Twitter saying that he was also violent. He stole $40,000. He cheated on her. 
he has whatever, whatever. I mean, there's always, and yeah. it's so it's like she has a checklist that she goes through. And so it's almost like the boy who cried wolf if for people mm-hmm. that pay attention, right? And I, I think that, that when, when Amber says certain things like stealing or cheating, you got to keep in mind that Amber Portwood has a very different definition of those words than the classic definition. I mean, I just described to you the, the stealing thing. Uh, if, if Andrew, and I, I'm using this as hypothetical, but if Andrew spoke to a woman about something Amber didn't know about, no matter what it is, Amber Portwood would see that as cheating and, 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 being, and being disloyal to her. Well, it wasn't yours that you were, like, talking to someone online? No, uh, yeah, I don't know which one. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't, it's been so long. But, you know, well, the one that, from the lie detector that was on Teen Mom. Yeah, yeah, it, that that was a whole that was a whole other thing. That was that was a much deeper backstory to that. And you know, um, I think the bottom line is you have to look at it like this: it's she has a certain way of thinking, and it's tough to change her mind once her mind is set and made up on something. And that could be anything. That could be whether or not it's going to rain today. You know what I mean? So, but I I will also say this, um, when, and a lot of people have asked me about this, that they said that I didn't buy the domestic violence towards Andrew. Well, that wasn't true. What, what I said was, um, I don't see Amber Portwood chasing somebody around the house with a machete because I never experienced something like that. And then I also said, I think it takes a whole lot more than getting stuck in traffic for fireworks to set her off that bad. Now, what I'm seeing now and and the escalation of this behavior that you're talking about, it's all possible. But I can only speak from my experience. And my experience was it took, it didn't necessarily take a lot to set her off, but it took more than traffic. You know what well, I mean? you told me that you guys got into an argument about Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Jolie. And yeah. that turned into a vicious altercation. Yeah, that was one of the worst things we ever had. So, I guess... But again, that, that goes back to, that was Amber thinking I was calling her stupid. Well, right. Because, so, I know, mean, that's what it's like. Maybe she thinks that, you know, somehow Andrew's calling her stupid because of something else. You know, like, um, the... Yeah, re- I, I, I don't know. Based on his based on his uh, assertions for the August eighteenth or whatever the punch where he punched her in, where she punched him in the face, um, he said that she wanted him to pass a car and he didn't want to pass a car because he said I don't want to put us in danger and then she immediately thought said well you think I want to put you in danger like so again like you're calling me stupid kind of thing like. It, it, it's similar. It, yeah. It, it's, it's similar. And sometimes it, it, it's a ramp up process to that explosion. Yeah. But I will tell you, and I think the people at Marriage Boot Camp now know this, and I think a lot of people that have had personal experience with Amber know this. Once that fuse is lit, it's not going to be put out by you or anybody else. It's going to be put out by her. And she, um, she gets to a point where you can see it coming. And, and I think, again, common misconception is that. Amber will just be fine one second and then suddenly haul off and backhand somebody. It's not how it is. There's a ramp up process and you, you literally can see it coming, but there's no way to avoid it at that point. You know, and, and I kind of heard that in some of the audio with, with Andrew, where he was trying to deescalate the situation. Yeah. There was no deescalating that at that point. Right. Uh, I've heard, I saw some comments where people said, why didn't you just walk away? Well, it's not as easy to do either because unless there's finality to that conversation, you're going to have it again, even if you leave for two hours. So you have to let her, you have to let her go through everything to be done. You kind of have to let the, let the the wick burn out at that point, you know? And I think there's a lot of people in the world that that are like that. But my experience with Amber was you could leave the situation, but if you come back later and there's no finality to it, you're picking up right where you left off. And that makes for a really long night. Yeah. So, so you said in the beginning it was good, and then towards the end it yeah. was really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a chat, a question in chat from Absinthe said, "Why doesn't why doesn't Amber take better care of her herself?" How so? I don't understand how. I don't know. That's just what they said. 
Well, um, if, if the question is from a mental health standpoint. Yeah, I um, think that's the. I, I think that, well, Amber first started seeing that psychiatrist when we were together. And it's a and child so, psychiatrist, which is weird. He does have a child psychiatry practice, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, when he, I, I think at first it was difficult for her. And in her defense, it's not easy for anybody, I think, to you know suddenly open up to a stranger like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, she, but she did go. Um, she was on her medication regimen at that point. And they, were, they were still trying to figure out which cocktail, for lack of a better term, worked best. Um, and then shortly after she started seeing him was the end of our relationship. So, I mean, Andrew would be better to answer why she didn't necessarily take care of herself now. I think that, I, I think, I, I do remember at one point during one of those meetings with the, with the psychiatrist, Amber asked a question. Um, and I don't, I don't want to quote her verbatim because I don't want to be wrong, but she did ask something like, for what I have, is there a cure? And I believe he said, there's no cure, but it's manageable or whatnot. All Amber heard was there's no cure. And I think it really, it, I remember her crying hysterically that night because she looked at me and she said, I'm going to be like this for the rest of my life. So she is very cognizant of her mental health. Um, and does she want to get better? Absolutely she does. I, I know she does. But she gets, she did, at least when she was with me, again, can't speak for Andrew, but when she was with me, she would get discouraged because I think she was hoping for a quick fix. And yeah, that, so this season on Teen Mom OG, they went to the psychiatrist and she basically just said, I just want a medicine to fix me. Right. And on Instagram, um, Andrew was posting, I don't even know, a couple weeks ago, where he found a bunch of Depakote and, like, w knew that she wasn't taking her medication and that um, she wasn't doing anything beyond medication. So she hasn't been doing, like, I know psychologists and, psych like, they'll they'll – for the different personality things that she says that she's diagnosed for, there's different cognitive behavioral and di dialectical behavioral therapies, and those weren't getting done either. So I think a lot of people wonder why she doesn't do the hard work. Well, uh, because it's hard work. I mean, working on yourself, and I, I can speak from personal experience through my ups and downs of sobriety throughout my life that it's, you know, if it's a long-term process, it can become very disheartening that there's, you can't fix the problem in 24 hours. And I, I think that, that Amber always had in her mind that him saying to her, there is no cure. And so sometimes she would get really, really doubt about that and say, well, what's the point of even trying? You know, and then sometimes she'd be really focused on it. And it, it can't be easy for anybody to be told that you're, for, no matter who it is, your borderline personality, and, excuse me, and your bipolar, that, that can't be easy for anybody to hear. You're dual diagnosed. Yeah. And, and oh, by the way, there's no cure for this. So. Well, the bipolar, I, I, I mean, are actually the personality, the borderline with, with therapy can actually get a lot better. Well, that's what she found out that out of marriage boot camp, actually. Dr. Ish did yeah. sit her down and say, well, because she brought up to him, I know there's no cure for this, and I'm going to be this for the rest of my life. And he said, from there's therapeutic ways to improve the, the, the symptoms of borderline and so on and so forth. Yeah, I, t I mean, I have so many people, I I'm not a psychologist, but I have so many subscribers that have, since this all come out, have, you know, reached out to me and said, you know, I have, be I have borderline, and I do all these different therapies, and I'm essentially in remission or um I can manage my behaviors through the therapy that I've learned and I'm like night and day compared to where I used to be um but it was a lot of work to get there um and I can definitely understand the it's overwhelming of course it is and it's overwhelming for anybody now take that and then put yourself in front of a million people every Monday you know and see that's and, and, where I wonder like Knowing that the, the mental health is what it is and then knowing what MTV is doing, 
to me, it's just exploitative to a point, you know, like I. Yeah, well, it, it can be. Uh, and so if people ask, well, then why do it? The money's really good, guys. <laughs> I mean, well, right. And I think the problem with this show, and we we talk about this a lot on this channel, is that MTV met these girls at very young ages, gave mm -hmm. them a lot of money, and put them in a position where they didn't have to finish college or really further their educations or learn skill sets beyond working for MTV. And, you know, Tyler's mom has talked about it a lot on the show saying, you know, you have to have a plan for what's next, you know, and some of them haven't and some of them have done better, you know. Um, yeah. And I, well, you know, some of them, uh, you know, the ones that, that I know personally, I, I know that, Macy kept a job for years in, into the show. You know, she she worked. Ryan kept a job. You know, and so on and so forth. But um, I, I think there's there's this thought in some of their minds, and I, I certainly am not speaking for them that they don't see an end in sight. They don't. They probably don't think this is going to end anytime soon. And I, you know, I think we've all been guilty of that at some point. Yeah. Whether, you know, a job or a relationship or whatever. Um, but maybe, maybe now with their age and with the stuff that's been going on with the cast, and maybe they they do see an end in sight. And and you also don't know. Some of them may be a lot more prepared than people realize. You know, so. Well, I would uh, think that Macy and Taylor they seem pretty prepared. Um, mm -hmm. On the other, on the flip side, like Kale and uh, Chelsea seem like they have a lot going on. Um, and then there's just others where I'm like, I don't know if they have anything going on. Um, yeah, and, and neither do I. And that's the thing. I think that they know, but, you know, they're the only ones that know their own financial situations. And, you know, Amber is certainly entrepreneurial in, in spirit. She, you know, she, at least when I was with her, she, you know, the boutique, the flipping houses, there's many things that she wanted to do. Her, uh, her, her dream was always to open up uh, a sober living, sober living facility for people that are just getting out of prison. That was that was her goal. Um, I don't know what happened to that, but that's where she was always building towards. She wanted to run uh, sober living facilities for people, so. There's been a lot of stuff in the press about spending. Was her spending out of control, like? Amber can spend money like I, I've never experienced before. It, but you know what, it's her money, so she can do whatever she wants, but it used to be a big joke where she would walk into a, and I'm not knocking her for this. I'm just telling you how it was. She would walk into a, a, a clothing store, for example, just grab a cart and start throwing stuff in the cart, never try anything on. And just, and I remember asking her, what if the stuff doesn't fit? She said, Oh, then we'll return it. But she never would never, got, she would never, never return, return it. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, uh, did she pay, like, did you take care of things in the house? Did you pay the bills? Did you clean? Did you cook? Like, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't great about that either back then. But, I mean, as far as if, if it got done, um, I was the one to, to do it. But, you know, I, I wasn't the most responsible person in the world either. At that what point. was the average time she got up out of bed? Okay. This is, uh, I, I'm going to give you the answer, and then I'm going to I'm going to give you the reason. Amber gets got up between two and four in the afternoon, and this was this was every day. Now, I'm going to add the disclaimer that when I was with her, Amber had a lot of trouble sleeping at night because she used to say, "I can't turn my brain off." So she would listen to music and stare at the TV and think and answer tweets until six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning, and then she would sleep throughout the day. I don't think a lot of that was on purpose. I don't think she liked being up all night, but she used to say, my mind is just racing and I can't shut my mind off. And then she would, you know, she'd get up really late in the afternoon. People, I have seen a lot of comments that say, oh, you know, who sleeps that long? I think they're assuming she's going to bed at 10 at night and sleeping at four in the morning or four in the afternoon. She's not. She's usually up till six thirty, seven a.m. Oh no, there's. I don't think there's been any. It's been clear in the press that she's been. I mean, Andrew has basically said she sat in a closet and smoked pot all night. Um, yeah, I've never seen her sit in a closet, but uh, you know, uh, again, she she wasn't doing the drug thing when I was with her. So, um, I, yeah, she had no reason to sit in the closet. I don't think. 
there's been a lot of questions about the house and I was in a chat yesterday and I was being berated about this house and I was telling people they bought the house. It was a cash payment or it, it, it doesn't have a mortgage and people literally could not believe it. Can you ask? It's true. It's true. Okay. Amber and I bought that house together. Okay. Uh, we bought it from uh, this gentleman who, owns his own private LLC. Yeah, an LLC. That's what's on the um, actual, de but like that's on the property transfer through the assessor. Yeah. It, we purchased it from him on what's basically called a contract. We put, it was either thirty or $50,000 down. A couple of months later, we gave them another $50,000. Then we had a balloon payment at the end of a certain amount of time. Yeah. And apparently Amber made that balloon payment. So we never rented the house. It was, it was purchased, but we did the mortgage privately through this gentleman. We were paying him directly rather than going through a bank. Like a contract for deed, basically. Exactly. what In Minnesota, that's what they call it. Contract yep. For deed. A lot of those out there. Okay. So, yeah, that's exactly what we did. It was just on a more grand scale because of the price of the size of the house. That's all it was. So there you have it, you guys. The house is in her name. She didn't rent it. There's been so many questions about that house. And it's like they don't believe me, even though I'm looking at the assessor's information. And there we go. So what about Leah? <clears throat> you, a lot of questions about how often does, did, when they were together. Obviously, things have changed um, as, rec as of recently from what I've heard from other people and like her former employee and... Um, just like what Andrew has said on Instagram and stuff that he didn't see, she didn't see Leah very frequently. What was it like when you were around? Leah was over um, anywhere between once a week and sometimes she'd stay the weekend to a couple of times a month. She was getting to that age where she wanted to hang with her friends and so on and so forth. So there were times when she was scheduled to come over that she didn't want to do it and that was the only reason why she had other plans or or whatnot but she wasn't uh she wasn't over all the time uh but you know it wasn't as infrequent as people think did you she know, spend I, the night oh yeah oh yeah every time she came over she spent the night um she uh we had a little kind of routine thing and amber's talked about this on the show that because amber was up most of the night uh leah and i would get up We'd make breakfast and we'd go do errands together. And by the time we were done, Amber was getting up, and then Amber would spend her time with Leah. So it was. Uh, I, I, I've been very vocal about the fact that I, I've said to many outlets that Amber was a good mom. And people say, "How the hell can you say she was a good mom?" Because the time she was with Leah, I've never heard Amber raise her voice to Leah or in front of Leah. I mean, she was. I, I used to ask Amber all the time, does everything need to be a life lesson with her? Because no matter what the scenario is, Amber would try to turn this into a lesson and she'd say, you know what, I'm not going to let this kid end up like I ended up. So she was very firm on that. And so I stick by Amber was a good mom. But again, that's only from what I saw. I, I've never seen her with James. I don't know how she is now. But when she was with Leah, she was a, a doting mother. And, I, and a lot of the tension around that was that she, that Leah wasn't around as much as she wanted. And I, I've never once saw Amber say, no, nah, I really don't want her around or I've got something else to do. If there was an opportunity, Amber jumped at it. So the Amber that people are talking about now isn't fully an Amber that I recognize. I mean, the, the, the language and, and, and the violence, absolutely. But and the name calling and whatnot, but the parenting and the drugs are some somebody that I don't know, and and I as an I, as an addict yourself, yeah, could you see how if she were an active addict, how that could change if she were like back in active addiction? Oh yeah, oh yeah. When I, when I was an active addict, my behavior changed immensely. I was pretty unlikable, to be honest with you. Um, but I've never seen Amber high, so I, I don't. Right. I mean, I don't know what she's like if she if she is taking drugs. So it would be so easy for me, and I love the the fact that people like to say, "Oh, Matt's a liar." But it would be so easy for me to sit here and just confirm everything that Andrew said and said, "Yeah, this is exactly what I went through." That would be a lie. 
Yeah. Well, right. You, I mean, you definitely went through some of the verbal abuse and of course. what about physical abuse? You know, it, it, I think it's pretty obvious that those you know, pictures, those pictures, yeah, I mean, she did yeah, that, right? I mean, yeah, they are what they are. And, but I think I told you this before, Katie, to you, me, the physical isn't the thing that affected me. Okay. It was the lack of self-esteem that I had after every time there was an altercation, the things that would come out of her mouth. I remember I would call people at MTV and I, and I, I kind of can connect with Andrew on this regard when he said that he would contact people and I would, I would call up a producer after this and, and one I used to call almost daily and we became really good friends and I'd say, can you believe this is what she just said to me? And by the time the conversation was over, I mean, nobody ever said, oh, that, that's okay, that's just Amber. They, they, they weren't like that. They would just say, no, Matt, it's not true that, you know, what she said about this or what, just try to keep your head up, whatnot. Yeah. And then I, I remember there were, there were nights that I would feel like, am I really <laughs> as bad as she says I am? I, underst- you know? I completely understand that. I so, completely understand that. Uh, or, or next thing you know, and they often say that the physical abuse is easier to get over than the uh, emotional and psychological and verbal. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not even close in there. You know, I, and it I, and it completely you know berate, like beats down your self esteem and. Oh yeah. And then you're with someone who has a much higher profile publicly than you. Yeah, that's tough. You know, that's what tough. did that imbalance of power do in your relationship? It didn't help. That's that's for sure, because. I, I think that there's an imbalance of power in all of the couples on this show. I don't I don't live with any of the other couples. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know their day to day, but I can tell you that Amber really stressed that imbalance of power. Um, you know. Uh, yeah. That's why when I, I think I'm, when I talked to you, I said the thing that kept coming out of her mouth in that audio that was the toughest for me was the word bitch. And yeah. I, I'll tell you why. When she got angry. She would pretty much say, "You are my bitch." Yeah, and, and I think you all. You also said um, that. What was the other thing that you said? Um, that everything was my. I made you, or I, um, you are everything because of me, or that kind of thing. Yeah, well, she didn't do a very good job because everybody hated me. <laughs> so <laughs> she could have done a better job making me, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, she didn't really she, defend you. No, 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 no. Good that. Okay, there's the do I all right, let me put it this way. You are so can't no, you know what you I I can tell that you have media experience. You're being very careful with your words. And well, I I'm just, but I don't want to say something that isn't true. Yeah, oh so, I understand I, that. I can tell you this that Amber um people ask me all the time, do you think Amber loved you? Absolutely she did. Yeah. And but there is the private Amber and yeah. then there's the public Amber. And if the public didn't like me she wasn't gonna step on her fans by saying leave my man alone but privately she would say they don't really matter baby i love you so much everything's wonderful and then um, why aren't you why aren't you defending me here well because then they're gonna get mad at me well you know that doesn't do great things so her fame to a point is more important and her perception of what other people think of her is more important than i wouldn't say fame i would say her image 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 um because when she came out of prison the first time she made a lot of changes in her life and she was an inspiration and, and i think in a lot of ways still is to a lot of people and i she, I think she saw me as somebody that could ruin that, even though I hadn't done anything. I mean, I think there was a lot of times where Amber hated the fact that she loved me, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know? But we were, we were, we were so, we spent 24 hours a day, 365 well, days a year together. As, I mean, and, as I've gotten to know you and I, I've like, I, I haven't, I haven't even gotten to know her, but I feel like I've talked to enough people that know her that I have a decent sense of it. Like, I could see why you guys would get along. You have some commonalities with the addiction and the things that you've overcome in your lives that would bond you. Um, yeah, oh yeah. We Amber and I had, uh, especially early on in our relationship, had a great time together. We had yeah. more in common than, than people realized. I mean, music and movies and, and just, Amber has a very, an, almost an encyclopedic knowledge of music. 
And so we, we bonded over stuff like that. And, you know, addiction was one and recovery was one, you know, we, so we had a lot in common. Um, we were also very, very different. She was famous. I wasn't. Yeah. And, you know, there, there's the common misconception that people said Matt got with Amber because he wanted to be on TV. Amber has said publicly uh, that she didn't even tell me the show was coming back on the air when we were together. See, that's the thing. That's the other thing she always says is that you guys are using her for fame. Oh, well, that, that, that's interesting because, again, I didn't know when we got together that the show was coming back on. I, I had no idea. Sure. So, um, so what – now the other question here – that I'm seeing come up in chat is, are you being careful with your words because you're, no. because you want to get back with Amber? Not in a million years ever. Um, I think people need to understand here that, and knock me for this all you want. Amber and I shared a life together, and just because we're not together anymore doesn't mean I'm gonna jump on the negative bandwagon and just bash her into. It's not who I am. It's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is, is tell you the truth. There were a lot of great times I had with Amber. There were a lot of hellish times I had with Amber. Yeah. Um, she could probably say the same about me. Um, I have no interest in getting back together with Amber, and Amber has no interest in getting back together with well, me. Well, and you guys haven't spoken, right? No, I, I texted her a few times since this whole thing started. And she hasn't responded. Not once. Because that's another question I'm seeing in there is, how much is Amber paying him to do this, like, uh interview like how much are you paying him like i don't pay people <laughs> uh, <laughs> i i don't know i don't know if amber would if she was paying me she'd probably want a refund because i'm not i'm not being overly positive well yeah you literally <laughs> just said yes she did gash my face out with those yeah, cuts I were mean, from her she verbally abused me um, i've never seen the point and and i see relationships and tv relationships and in particular Everybody immediately runs to social media and starts bashing each other. Yeah. That's not who I am. I mean... No, Amber, you have I, always protected her to a fault. Well, and, but and I'm not doing that now. I'm just being honest. I, yeah. I, you know, it's... Amber and I spent a lot of time together, and one of the promises that I made her when we first got together was, if anything ever happened, I'm not going to tell all these secrets that I know about you, because that's a big fear of hers that people are gonna turn on her. Hence the fact that when Amber had the miscarriage in, in Las Vegas, I let everybody think that I just angrily punched a wall in some drunken haze because I wasn't gonna out her secrets. Um, and I stuck by that, you know? Um, I was triggered by that audio, you know, obviously. Yeah. And I felt a little bit defensive of, An of Andrew because he was getting beat up a little bit. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm not, my goal in life is not to help or hurt Amber Portwood or her family or anybody. I'm just telling you what I experienced. And you seem, was, I'm sorry, I was I, just going to say, no. you seem like you're in a much better place yeah. today yeah. than when you were in the height of all of this. Like, yeah. does it feel good to be kind of back a little bit more in obscurity? Yeah, oh, it's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. I, uh. You know, I mean, I still get questions almost daily about something that happened on the show. Or, yeah. You know, and it's, sometimes it's really funny how not caught up people are because they'll come up to me and say, oh, where's Amber? Yeah, I don't know. yeah. It's been two and a half years. I don't know one But, um, you know, it's that's not an easy life. And I, I see that there are people out there that say, oh, I would love to be on reality TV. And, and that's great. Be on reality TV all you want. But there is a dark side to it. And I experienced that dark side. And did I reap the benefits of it? Absolutely, absolutely, I did. Um, and I wouldn't—I'd be a liar if I said that the money wasn't great. And the first time somebody asks you for a picture, it's not the greatest feeling in the world. But once the dark side takes over, I mean, obscurity is better. <laughs> and are you like doing well with your sobriety? Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. And you were I, married, but now are divorced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything's, uh, you know, relationships have um, have been good and bad, and now they're back to good. <laughs> so, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. And you're now, you've moved, you're in Vegas now. Yep. Yeah, been, uh, I moved to Vegas right after marriage boot camp. So it's uh, 2017. Do you have any yeah. plans to return to reality TV at any point? Or are you done? Any, any plans? Yeah. Uh, no, but you never know what'll happen. You never know. You never know. So... 
Is there any final words that you have? Yeah, I, I would like to say this. Um, from Andrew's standpoint and, and Amber's standpoint, Yeah. Uh, whether you're pro Amber, pro Andrew, it doesn't matter to me. But we're talking about a situation that involves abuse. Yeah. Going, going online and calling people the names that some of you people call these people is also a form of abuse and, and you're no better. Um, it doesn't help a situation to get on and say, Andrew's a disgusting so-and-so and it doesn't help that, you know, Amber's insane and she needs, you know, all the stuff that people say. You don't have to agree or disagree, but I don't think you're helping the narrative so much by, you can voice your opinion and, and you're welcome to do that. But there's been some comments on both sides that have been horribly mean. Yeah. I, I saw a comment that somebody put on Sean Portwood's Twitter that it was so disgusting that it, it and so vile, and I'm not going to repeat it, but Katie, you might know what it is. Um, I was just blown away that somebody would type this into a, and make this into 140 characters. I was horrified. About was, Sean? No, it was about... Amber and their sister. It was the most disgusting comment, and I and I've had some pretty disgusting comments. I don't think I saw that, but you know what? Sean thinks I'm a Sean thinks I'm like a nobody, so that's what he called me today. Well, welcome <laughs> to the club. I'm gonna have we're, we're gonna have a back debate, but um, I, I I saw the, this comment, and I was just just horrified that somebody would write this. Guys, remember that these are real people. You, yeah. And as far as Amber goes and Andrew goes. You don't have to like what they do. You can hate what they did. Doesn't mean you have to hate the person behind it. You know, uh, I don't think either of them are bad people. And I can only speak for for Amber and to say she has done some monstrous things. She's also done some wonderful things, at least when she was with me. So I can't yeah. speak for a relationship with Andrew. Um, wait to see how this thing plays out. Uh, that's what the the, the courts are there for. And, um, you know, I can promise you that th these comments do have an effect on, on people because they affected me. And it, it's it's not easy. It might make you feel good in, in the 10 seconds it takes you to hit send. But some of those comments stick with us for a long time. And, yeah, I... Uh, this has been an, an... I didn't ever expect to be stuck in the middle of the story. And it's been a lot, obviously. Um, uh, this the the very the stands of teen mom can be pretty vicious on mm -hmm. um whether they're for you or against you or whether they believe you or they don't believe you and there's people that think i'm a terrible human being for what i'm doing and other people that think i'm not whatever um yeah. i think more than anything what most people like me they just want the truth and they don't feel like they're getting the truth and they just don't feel like they just, I think a lot of people in general are just feeling really worn out by all of the lies that are coming out of her mouth, all of the lies that are coming from MTV and their lack of response. Like, how does that make you feel? Can we real quick touch on the, the MTV? Yeah, thing? yeah. Because uh, I know you wanted to ask me about that. Uh, I got asked about this earlier today. Do I think Amber should be fired? Um, I look at this from two points of view. Uh, number one, MTV is a business and they're a full profit business. And that storyline would probably garner a lot of viewers. So I don't think it's fair to say that MTV is, is supporting domestic violence by having her on. That being said, uh, personally, I would like to see her be removed from the show. The, the only reason is, well, there's two reasons actually. One, I don't think, I think now that the kind of behind the scenes stuff has been exposed, I don't know how the audience can look at her the exact same way anymore. Yeah. Uh, that's number one. And, and number two, for her own good, I, I, I don't think the that's, public eye is, You know, is that's what I've, for, uh, honest, to be frank, I've heard that from a lot of people is that maybe being removed from the show would actually help her mental health and actually help her maybe come back down to earth a little bit, um, find a little bit of that humility and actually do the work that she needs to, to actually take care of herself. 
Right. I, I think that, and I can tell you that when I was off the show, um, it, it is a positive therapeutic experience to, to not turn on, you know, turn on TV on Monday night and see yourself on there, especially in a negative light. Right. Uh, and so I, I, I can only imagine for her and for Andrew as well. Um, the most important thing right now is, is, is the baby. Yeah. And, and Andrew seems like a, like a wonderful father. And I think that let this thing play out because it's not easy on either of them, I can imagine. And the more this gets played out in the court of public opinion, and, and, and to be honest, court of public opinion doesn't matter. No. I mean, they're, they're not the ones that make this decision. Um, and It can know, impact and, her long term. I mean, look what the court of pu- public opinion has done to Janelle Eason. I mean, it has ruined her. Look what the, I mean, I, I, and I understand that. And, and same I mean, with Vera. I mean. Yeah, but Vera doesn't care. <laughs> You know, you know, you can buy a date with Vera for five thousand dollars. I can be treated like shit for free. Yeah, so, I know. <laughs> you, know. you can also buy her naked pictures, which you can find for free on Pornhub. Well, you know what? I will say this about Vera. Uh, you know, having spent time with Vera over the years, you cannot say that she's not a businesswoman. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and anything she wants to do to support her child is is her business, and I, I have respect for her as a business person. I'm just not a big fan of her as a person because of the way she treats people. Other than that, more power to her. Okay, final question. Good. This comes from Michelle Wright. Oh, wait, actually, Melanie, um, Linda asked about sleeping patterns. We already did that. Melanie just wanted to let you know that she's really grateful that you're speaking your truth. Um, And Michelle just said, do you believe Andrew? Yeah, I do. Of course I do. Uh, you never want to ever not believe the victim until it's proven that the victim's not telling the truth. Okay. Um, I, of course, I, I, I believe Andrew 100%, and I support Andrew 100%. Um, so what he went through, whether the details are here and there aren't exactly what people think, doesn't matter. The end result is that family is now split up that baby is without his mother. Andrew is a, is in Indiana with no support system. Um, it's it's a I hate I hate to over the overly use the word tragic, but it's a tragic situation for yeah. everybody. And um, I just hope that everybody comes out of this better than than when they went into it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the court, uh, and I obviously I would wish Amber the best. That being said, if if she did what they say she did, then the, the court's going to make the right decision. So that's all I can really say. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Matt. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate you it. You have been awesome. I'm, my uh, chat's very, they're mixed, but a lot of them are saying <laughs> congrats. Thank you for sharing. Many are saying come back again some other time, and we would love to have my, you back anytime. My haters are devoted. <laughs> Um, yeah, and no, no problem. I'm glad that we can clear some stuff up, and uh, you know, I wish you the best in your endeavor. Thank you, Matt. Have a uh, really good care. night. All right, bye. Bye. All right, you guys. That's the end of it. That was Matt. Love it, hate it. I know I probably didn't answer every question. I might not have gone as hard on him, but I'm trying to guide a conversation and keep him open without being defensive and. We're not probably going to get all of the answers that we want, but I do thank him so much for joining me. I'll see if I can have him back on another time. I want to thank all of you that gave super chats and that were engaged in this conversation. And hopefully this gives you a little more of a picture. On Without a Crystal Ball, I might be going after this story hard, but my point here is always to find and seek truth. And my thing is I just want to find out what happened. I want the truth to be revealed. And I'm a believer in truth because... I believe victims and I want the victims in this cases to be heard and I don't want the fame of one person to re-victimize someone else and if things change and if 